deferral fails by a count of 2-5. We have a presentation from the consultant that has been charged with the task of helping us determine the proper order of the projects. Jim, you want to take over from the presentation aspect? I do. Mike Mize is here again. And we have not new information this week. This is the same information that, that, that we've had uh, three weeks ago when Mike was here, and we spent about an hour going over this. There, there are uh, two options uh, that were, are on the agenda. Um, in Mike will go into more detail, but in, in, in essence, option one moves the convention center up a, a, a few months and moves the park back into three phases a number of months. Option two keeps the park in a north-south format and moves the convention center back a little bit. That's the big picture differences. There's a little bit more to it than that. But with that, Mike. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, council members, Manager Couch, as, as uh, Mr. Couch has indicated, the presentation that I have today is uh, identical to the presentation we made three weeks ago. I'll be happy to go through that um, as quickly or as slowly as you want and answer any questions that you might have. So please don't hesitate to ask questions if you have them during the presentation. Um, just as a matter of introduction, we have attended all of the uh, subcommittee meetings, all of the advisory committee meetings, city council meetings, have had input from individual citizens and from other areas of the, the city as well, and all of that has been taken into account as part of uh, our preparing these two options for the project order. Um, the original conceptual project order was developed in March of this year. Um, at that time, we did not have the benefit of having met um, repeatedly with the subcommittees, with the advisory committee. We have, uh, we ADG have engaged some uh, consultants whose work had not yet been completed as part of that original concept order, which is one of the reasons that it has changed over time. Um, the second project order that really was presented to City Council was at the Joint Advisory Board City Council uh, workshop, and that's the, pres the uh, project order that's presented here. There were subsequent subcommittee meetings and other meetings that took place um, following that. And as a result, uh, uh, and, and just briefly, the differences between that presentation um, to the joint meeting and the original um, are delineated on your sheet and uh, are up on the screen right now. And I can go through those in more detail if you'd like or just move on to the, to the two recommended project orders. I think I'll move on. Um, I am going to get to, do we have those here? Yeah. We have two recommended project orders. The first project order, um, I, I recognize these are a little difficult to see, but we do have um, a detailed list of how these changed from the project order that was presented in the April workshop. Um, project order, revised project order number one, moves the convention center up 30 months. Phase four of the river, the lower park design and construction, and phase two of the transit are moved back two years. The last three wellness centers and the later phases of trails are extended. The upper park is divided into two phases. The first phase, which is early in the program, is a, a pretty minimal phase that would allow um, a landing of the Skydance Bridge and some uh, landscaping at the northern end of the upper park. The, uh, the balance of the upper park would be completed later in the program. The fairgrounds project would move up one year. The river whitewater project would move up six months to, to help it try to coincide with um, uh, allowing it to have some time to do pre-Olympic events prior to the 2016 Rio Olympics. On transit, we added an investigation and standards phase, which really reflect the process that is on, currently ongoing and will be continued to be required to try and obtain federal financing. And that's the, the reason for adding that particular phase. Revised project order option two 
really only has two significant changes from project order number one, uh, and that is that it moves the convention center up 21 months as opposed to 30 months, and it um, moves the entire, the completion of the upper park to um, be completed at the end, by the end of 2014, rather than being split into three phases, it's only two phases. It's an upper park and a lower park. The lower park would still continue to be done much later in the program. And I'm happy to answer any questions um, that you might have. Yes. Uh, with respect to the Wellness Center, can we compare, since both option one and two are similar with respect to the Wellness Center, what was the proposed timing of the last three wellness centers as far as they are being selected and, and construction beginning? Well, the, one of the reasons that we've uh, spread those wellness, there are several reasons that we've spread those wellness centers out, and we've, um, as part of our meetings with the, uh, the wellness center subcommittee, we've, we've expressed this. These are um, the first of a kind, not only for Oklahoma City, but in many ways first of a kind um, nationally. The consultant that we've engaged said that, that the um, wellness, senior wellness um, community throughout the United States really has focused on this opportunity that Oklahoma City has. We believe that because of the complexity of these projects, because of the fact that each of these four could be unique and distinct based upon where they're located within the city. Um, and because each of these projects is going to require a partner for, to, to assist in the operations of these, we've extended out the first one a little bit to allow for more time to actually identify where that goes, who that partner is, and what is the appropriate level of service to be provided for that particular first one. The reason to extend those other three out is so that after the first one is complete, we have an opportunity to look at lessons learned, to find out what works, what doesn't work, to make sure that the second one, it takes advantage of everything that we can learn from the first, and also has an opportunity to go into that specific community where it's going to be located with the specific partner that would be chosen for that to make sure that the level of, level of services and the types of facilities that are provided are appropriate for that second uh, wellness center. And we've allowed for a little bit of time for both the third and the fourth um, to repeat that process to make sure that when we get done, each of those four best reflects the needs of the particular community in which it resides. Is that? Well, but excuse me again, going back to the original proposal, would all four partners, would they have been selected in 2011 under the first proposal that we looked at in it's, April? It's my understanding that the, the partners would be selected um, for each individual project so that the first partner selection would be just for the, the, the first wellness center. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, may I mention something uh, about the vote we just took? Sure. Uh, you know, a week ago, I still had some questions about the whole process, but since that time, I've spoken with Mike Adams, who serves on the uh, advisory board for Ward 5. He's a CPA and controller out of LSB. He's attended just about every meeting. Based upon the discussion with Mike, he's comfortable with either one of these two proposals. While he has a preference, and I'll uh, support his preference when we get time to uh, vote, um, again, he's very comfortable with the process, and I, I'm just concerned to ignore all of the work that everybody on the committee has has put into this effort uh, by by uh, doing something other than these two proposals. Uh, even though I may have some preferences on one or two of these items, I am really pulled to. Uh, 
take into consideration what's been recommended to us and, and uh, want to pursue. I may have some more questions, but that was the one that came first. So All right. Thank you. Pat, and then Skip. I'd just like to make a comment. It's not a question. And uh, I did, uh, found a powerful tool for analyzing this. It helped me, and it was the yellow pencil. Um, I looked at the order, uh, option one, and I looked at the purple time slots only, because that's actual construction. And to a, a lot of our citizens, that's when the project begins, is when we begin to turn dirt. If you look at the convention center, the, it's to start construction in 2016. Actual construction, the first time that a shovel hits the dirt. And I drew a straight line down uh, through that time, to the bottom of the chart, and then looked at the impact on other projects. By the time the construction convention center starts construction, uh, all of the sidewalks projects will have been completed. Uh, two of the, th the three trails projects will have been completed. And the um, uh, third one will be under in, in, in pre-construction A&E stage. One wellness center will have been completed in an operation. The second wellness center will be under construction at that point in time. Uh, all of the fairground projects will be completed. All the river projects will be completed. The transit uh, projects will be under construction at that point in time. They will have started previous to the convention center. And uh, the parks, uh, the first phase of the park will be completed. The second phase will be in the design and, and uh, a and &E part of the thing. So I, I think that moving the, the uh, uh, convention center forward allows us to do complete a lot of the, quote, quality of life projects. Uh, before we get involved in, in the actual construction of the convention center. So I think uh, option one is a, is a, is a great compromise. It re, it, I think it reflects some very thoughtful consideration by the committees uh, in their work. And um, I, uh, I, I was uh, pleased to see it and looked at it with my, I should say, sort of primitive analysis and found out that the, a lot of the concerns that were expressed earlier by some of my colleagues about doing the, uh, the convention center before we do the quality of life projects really wasn't there. When you look at this, we do the quality of life projects. We complete a lot of them. We start up all of them before we start actual construction on the, the uh, convention. That's an interesting perspective. Skip? Uh, Mike, my, my uh, question is you, you referenced to the uh, wellness projects as if they were uh, so unique that it's been a difficult time, you know, laying the, the actual renderings of, of what one of these projects is. Are they looking at other cities? I mean, what, what, is, what is the major problem with the wellness program? Well, the, the fact of the matter is there is a, a, a consultant who's been hired. It's a local consultant with a national um, sub-consultant that has spent a significant amount of time looking at wellness centers in other parts of the country to try and identify some common um, services and facilities which may be provided in each of these wellness centers. As we've discovered, that, that core group um, is reasonably small and doesn't take into account the specific needs of each of the individual areas where these may take place. That subcommittee hasn't quite completed its work but they are currently in the process of trying to make some determination about what some of these common elements may be. And they have looked, frankly, they've looked at, at other wellness centers in, in several other parts of the country, Council. And then my other question is, and this may be the big elephant in the room that nobody wants to hear, but this, the convention center, and, you know, we knew from beginning of the project, which projects were more popular than others as it relates to the voters. So past that, fast forward, you build a convention center, where are you going to house the people who come to the convention? Well, I think everyone who's involved in the, con in the, in the convention center process understands that a convention center hotel, if not a prerequisite, is something that has to follow very quickly. And it's my understanding that the city and is working on trying to find ways to bring a convention center hotel 
that would be complete at or near the completion of the convention center, which, if you look, is not until 2018 or 2019. But where would the location be? I mean, because you, we were talking about the acquisition of land for the convention center. We should be talking about the acquisition of land for a convention hotel at the same time, shouldn't we? Well, I, can, I actually would like to defer a specific answer to that to the Convention Center Site Selection Committee, which, which has um, a representative here. But the fact of the matter is um, that has been taken into consideration as part of their work and as, as part of their um, proposal for the site selection. Okay. If I can make a real quick comment to Skip's first question on looking at other cities. And, and I don't want to say I'm speaking for the committee, but sitting in on those meetings, I can tell you that, uh, as he said, this is kind of unique in that if you looked at the other cities that they have gone and looked at, I don't think there's any of them of the size, either geographically or population-wise, that have done senior centers. There's some real good examples out there, but they're in much smaller cities. And the, the audience and the, and the, the uh, geographic area that they had to cover uh, is not as great as we've got here. So part of the task that the subcommittee is really struggling with is how do we make the best bang for our buck? If we're going to cover all of Oklahoma City in four wellness centers, it is going to take considerably more information than, let's say, I don't know what some of those cities were, San Jose comes to mind. It seems like there was one in San Jose, California. Well, it's a much smaller geographic city that they have to worry about, so to speak. So uh, uh, it's not that they haven't studied other com cities. I think it's that they haven't found a good example for a city of our size. And, and Mike may disagree with that or, or not, but I think that that's part of the concern that the consultant providing the information to the committee trying to make their decisions on. Okay. Larry? Then Pete? Yeah, I did a similar thing that, that Pat did on, um, I drew a line down, um, I sensed earlier that uh, three of the uh, projects that the council w was interested in, I personally was interested in, so I'm going to speak just for myself, uh, was the wellness center, the trails, and the sidewalks, because I thought that they were uh, the easiest ones to get a, get a grasp on, even with the complexity uh, that I've come to realize is involved in a wellness center. Well, if you take those three ish, uh, right there, by the end of 2014, uh, the first wellness center is scheduled to be completed if we go on schedule. Uh, the first uh, enhancement to the trails is scheduled to be completed, and all the sidewalks are scheduled to be completed. And so I think from, from my perspective, these uh, homegrown, if you will, quality of life issues that were important to me personally, I think are, show excellent progress under the uh, under the, the uh, revised uh, project order that you've got here, and so uh, I support them very uh, very enthusiastically from that standpoint. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Pete? Um, my view is this whole process is just to bring the convention center forward. There never was any consideration for any of the other ideas. If the same amount of energy was being put into the wellness center, and it had the same political clout that the subcommittee does for the convention centers, we'd be talking about when can we build a convention center. If the trails had the same, if the parks had the same, if any of them had the same clout that the convention center subcommittee had, we wouldn't be here today. But the fact is they don't. Convention center subcommittee said, how can we get to the front of the line or as close to the front of the line? And all the work then that was done was to move them to the front of the line. I remember Mike Dover saying, when he, when he first heard it, he said, it's like saying, do you want to take a shower when you're getting ready to put your kids to bed? You want to take a shower or you want to take a bath? Either way, you're going to get wet. Either way, you're going to get cleaned up. And that's what this is. This is just an effort to jam it right to the front, as far to the front as it can, and all these sophisticated arguments and ratings and rankings and all that stuff are just so much window dressing to move what the whole idea was in the first place to the front of the line. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick about it. I mean, it is just, it's a mistake on the part of the city from a public policy standpoint. It, it, to talk about it being fair and what we're doing to these other subcommittees, these other subcommittees didn't have an opportunity to meet and say, 
what does it take to move us to the front of the line? Come on, we all know that. We're, we, somebody might as well say that. They didn't have that opportunity. One subcommittee had the opportunity to do that, say that, and the result is you, your company, then shoved everything else aside and figured out a way to make that happen. Now, I, I guess you know who's writing your paycheck. But I'm, I am disappointed that there wasn't any balance involved in that. You can, <laughs> I've talked to, everybody, they've talked to somebody. Well, I've talked to somebody too. I've talked to people that, that, that are on the Parks Committee that think that the, the process was, is terrible, think it was awful, that it, there, that was not the way it should have done. Each committee should have, an, should have had an opportunity to look at the impact on them not just to have somebody look at how we move the convention center to the front. I mean, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed that caused the decision to be made to put these in order, in the order that we originally put them in, except one thing has changed. The subcommittee for the convention location system has the most powerful people in Oklahoma City on it, and they are moving it forward at the expense of everybody else. That's the only thing that's changed. We know exactly the order of all these things. We know where people, what people cared about and what they didn't care about. I've got the polling results that showed that the convention only, convention center only came along when it was push-polled. It didn't come along and said you want to build a convention center. It came along when it was push-polled and tied to a sidewalk. So here we are now ignoring all the, the realities of what happened based on who's got the power. Obviously, I don't have the power today, but I, if I had it, I, I would reform this system. This process would be reformed so it was a fair process, so each subcommittee had the same opportunity that the convention location subcommittee had. The wellness thing, you, you hide and watch, that's going to be it. That, that's not a project that, 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 that those people care about. I don't need to name those people. I, everybody knows who I'm talking about. That's the, the transit is a project they don't care about. Trails are not a project they care about. So all that stuff's going to the back. You can say, oh, well, it's going to get started. That's wonderful. It's going to get started. That wasn't our original plan. Our original plan was to build it. It wasn't to, to, to get it started and then push part of it to the back. The, there is one thing that's changed. The, the, the Myriad Gardens, and this is a reflection on us, how poorly vetted the entire process was because we should have known what was going to happen in the Myriad Gardens. We should have been told that so that we weren't making an effort to replicate a park right next door to it with all the same features. That's the only thing that's changed. Now that we know that, good judgment says, well, we got some space to move some things around because we shouldn't probably build a brand new park right next to a brand new park until we have a chance to figure out how that first park's going to work. I mean, that does make some sense. But the idea that all the benefit from that will flow to the convention center, to me, is when we have a $50 million elephant in the room, I mean, that, now, now it all starts to come clear why this rush to do the alliance was made. It's to find a way to finance a $50 million hotel so you can build a convention center. It doesn't have anything to do with this big picture pastel that we were painted about we want to make sure we figure out how we ensure the continuity of this process. It's all, it's all tied together. I mean, my friend Jerry Gilbert used to sit over there in that vacant seat over there. You say that he didn't agree that he was paranoid, but that didn't mean they weren't after him. <laughs> and I, and I, I tend to echo that today. I mean, too many things happen just boom, 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 without what, without what I consider to be an open process for that all to be a coincidence. It isn't a coincidence. We're just right. We're just passengers on a train up here. Yeah, I'd and like I, to bring Eric up and and uh, talk to him about the advisory board process. Um, Eric, this uh, the advisory board saw a, a duplicate or a very similar presentation. What was the vote at the advi citizen advisory board level on this? They they at that point uh, we had uh, two no votes in in May on the two project orders, but the, the vote was a, a positive vote for option one um, with two, two no votes. Um, I'm so, sorry, you confused me somewhere. So did they vote, they voted on option one, and yes. the vote was seven, two in favor? That's correct. Okay. Um, one other thing that I want to offer is, you know, we were, we were 
we were somewhat criticized from a staff level in May from the advisory board also from the subcommittees not having another opportunity to look at those two options. It is true that those two options that are presented to you today, the two that went to the subcommittee in, in May, did not go back to those subcommittees at that time. But in that end of May and through the month of June, we did take those back and we did receive some additional comments um, from them. But I would tell you from the perspective of, of the meetings and the meeting with each of those, those, uh, those groups, and again, this is over 60 stakeholders that we're meeting with, that uh, I would say all of them were positive for these two options. There were still some concerns from the park level about how the park would be split. You know, could that be a viable option? And I would say, some agreed that it should be split, that we ought to see how the, the Myriad Gardens performs. There's others that think that it st should still be right at the very beginning. Um, but that would be the one subcommittee, I think, that had the most vocal comments about either option. But I, I would come to you today, both are very doable options. Mm -hmm. Both work, both work from a financial standpoint, but they recommended option one. Gary, you were at, representing the council at the citizen advisory board level. Did you get the impression that the advisory board felt rushed or intimidated or in any way didn't have an opportunity to, to fully vet the, 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 the presentation and the, the concept before them? I, I believe all of them, um, either in their own subcommittees or at the uh, board level, advisory board level, uh, I shouldn't say all of them. There were a couple of them that voiced concern about the process, um, the, the fact that some, that the, um, uh, timeline actually hit the public and the council uh, before their next subcommittee meeting. Uh, but they had, in, in the discussions that went on around this horseshoe in the advisory council, I did not sense that any of them um, felt, I mean, I, it, it, it was not something that they were just going to throw their hands up and say, right. we, we didn't, you know, this wasn't good, we didn't like this. And each subcommittee is represented on the advisory board. And so although the, the subcommittees did not meet uh, necessarily to, to weigh in on this proposal, the uh, chair of each subcommittee is part of the citizen advisory board. And so there was a representative who listened to this presentation and had an opportunity to vote and, um, at the advisory board level. The chair and the vice chair both on each subcommittee are from the advisory board. And at the last meeting, um, Chairman McDaniels went around one by one and made sure that any of them uh, on each of the subcommittees, he brought each subcommittee up by name and then had the chair and the vice chair had the opportunity to, to uh, voice their concerns or bring anything up that they wanted to bring up. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, any other questions for Eric? And then we, we have a lot more. I know we need, still need to discuss. David, do you have well, a question for Eric? Question. Is there <clears throat> comment? Okay. Well, um, and Pete, please don't take this as being uh, non-supportive of your views. They're important. But I do want to bring out, because if we don't, people are going to just take what you said as being true. But for example, the white water part of the river, it's being moved up by six months under both proposal. That's a positive. That's not impacting the convention center. The fairgrounds, which from day one has been a, a uh, an item that I think has a lot of potential is being moved up by one year. I think that's great. Uh, a lot of people throughout the city like that. The uh, upper park under proposal two uh, is being completed by 2014. Um, and then um, the wellness center, you know, I think if we pick the right partner for the first one, the issues of, of land acquisition and other things could be greatly accelerated. Uh, you know, we could pick one today, and I think tomorrow they'd have that thing up and running. Uh, so I'm not concerned with that, and I think we will uh, it'll accelerate the process related to the remaining three wellness center. Again, if we pick the right first partner, uh, I think we've got some representatives here who could support that. Um, the concern I do have more so than the convention center is the transit center, I mean the transit system, and I'm a big proponent of mass transit for Oklahoma City. Uh, I think it's critical for not just now but for the next 50 years in the development of Oklahoma City, so I'm a, I'm a big supporter of it. 
The area that I have a concern with, though, is the proposed track, and we now have an investigation process within the transit center that will focus on the route selection, which I think is critical. Uh, personally, since uh, Pat voiced his preference, uh, I'm going to voice my preference, and that's option two. Um, the convention center will be completed in 2019 under option two. That's eight years from now. Um, it does allow us to have at least the upper end of the park completed by 2014, which hopefully kind of coincides with the opening of the Oklahoma City Boulevard, but perhaps not. But, and I'm not concerned with Mary Gardens. I don't necessarily think that we have to have this Central Park to be a duplicate of the Myriad Gardens. In fact, I hope we don't. I'd like to see it more like the mall area in Washington, D.C., where by 4 o'clock, that park area is just filled with young adults, young individuals playing softball, volleyball, soccer. Talk about great use. That is, uh, it's just filled, and we could do the same thing with this park. And I think the uh, maintenance of that type of a facility is not as great necessarily as what the uh, Myriad Gardens is. So to move the convention center up 21 months under option two does not create a concern for me. Um, again, we're still talking as far as 2019, as far as when it's being opened. Plus, that gives us more time to address the issue of a hotel. And finally, the Alliance uh, for Economic Development. Maybe I'm naive, uh, but I see a lot more uses other than focusing just on this convention center. I see the development of the eastern part of the airport land, uh, a very important part of the Alliance's responsibilities, looking to get us uh, private development, as well as, again, throughout South Oklahoma City and especially along I-240 and even skip in Northeast Oklahoma City, I think the alliance is going to be very important and helpful to the city in the overall efforts of economic development. Finally, in these discussions about wellness and health issues, uh, several weeks ago, you know, there are certain counties in the United States, Oklahoma has a couple of them, to where the average life expectancy of females is less than third world countries. The common uh, issue in all those counties relates to the level of income. So the more we focus on economic development, it's going to uh, increase, hopefully, the standard of living and uh, address some of those wellness concerns, at least on an indirect level. Even this morning, a common denominator that we saw in those uh, areas of the city that had more health problems were lower income. So when we can help improve the overall income level of our citizens, I think we're doing a lot, uh, especially in the area of health and wellness. Pete, I'm hard pressed to believe that the creation of 700 minimum wage jobs is going to do anything to help the average income. I, I just want to say, yes, go ahead, Skip. You know, and and for the record, every one of the council people here, I get along with, and my my statement as far as being divided is particular in reference to where we are today as it relates to these projects, because it has some division, some some divided, you know, issues. But I want all of us to understand one thing: at the end of the day. When we went to the citizens and we asked for this last MAPS 3 that we may not see another one, it was, as has been stated, every last one of those projects that was outside of downtown Oklahoma City that reached and could connect to the citizens throughout this city became a passionate and a support from them to us. And when other projects was added on, it was still those projects that was carrying the wagon. And I know where I live. And I know the citizens that voted for me. And I know what I went out in my community and advocated and told them what we would do 
if they would support us. And that's why I continue to make the statements that I make as it relates to those quality of life projects that I feel like deserve a faster track than some of these other huge projects that you know for a fact, you know, is going to take much, much longer than what's predicted and what's projected. And if the economy ever takes another slide, those other projects won't see the life of day, not for a long time. And we'll come back just like we had to come back once before and ask the citizens to extend. And they may not be here for us. And I just think that out of nothing but a pure fairness to, to the quality of life projects, and I hear people say, well, you know, the, the convention center is a quality of life. It's a quality of something from somebody that comes outside from, that don't live in Oklahoma. And when you look at this whole issue about the economics of it, I don't know too many people that get ready to go to a convention and they want all the particulars and amenities of the convention hall. They want to know where's the accommodations for living. They want to know where's the shopping. They want to know where the fun activities are. They want to know what can the kids do. Where can the wives go shopping? The, where's the transportation? And how far is it from the hotel that I'm going to be staying at? And I don't understand why we can't look at some of this in a way that realize that, first of all, like the river project, the whitewater project. You know, we talk about the park, but let's, let's be for real. We are in Oklahoma. We're not in Los Angeles, California. We're not in San Diego. We're not in Arizona. Our parks are basically used about nine months out of the year, eight maybe at the most. And so we just built a park that nobody expected to turn out the way it did. I don't think we need to be talking about a park for quite some time. Let's see how that park gets used. Yes, it would be nice to be like New York. It'd be nice to be like Washington, D.C. But we know the demographics in Oklahoma. We know the population in Oklahoma City. So I just think that, you know, when, when we continue this process, Ward 7 will know that I said that I was fighting for the quality of life projects to move them as fast as they could. And I think within a reasonable fairness in reference to the balance of this, and this is what I said the last time. But I just, I, I don't like the idea that things are being pushed the way they've been pushed, and at the same time not standing up firmly and talking to us about the other elephant, which is the convention center, and the, I'm going to say the convention center and the hotel. And then we get bits and pieces about a hotel from outside sources that comes dripping down the, the pipeline. Instead of just having this whole process straight up and down, just say simply, you can't build a convention center in 2012 or 2019 and don't have a connecting convention hotel to it. And we talk about that like it's it's subpar, but in fact, it's reality. And where are we going to get the money to build that? Are we going to go back and ask the citizens for it? Because we didn't tell them when we put these projects together that, you know, we, we're going to put this convention hotel on here, and we want you to support it, but we may have to come back and find $50 million to build it or find a partner to build it. But I, I find it kind of interesting that it's, we can be aggressive about looking for all those other resources. But this wellness center, sidewalks and trails, those are not long debated issues. It don't take that much consulting and that much studying to look at cities that's comparable to Oklahoma City 
and realize that, you know, you can do this. The YMCA, the YMCA probably could give us more, more information about how to do it than anybody. I just think that we, we're going to find ourselves stuck in a, in a situation that is not going to be good in the long run. I just, I just, and I, and I, I just don't like the fact that the projects that was the genuine voter supporting projects are being played second fiddle to some of these other projects. And I'm not saying I don't support the other projects because the record would clearly show that I stood in the middle of a den of lines and churches in neighborhood meetings and I took the wrath standing up for these projects. But I also knew that the projects that was driving and that was more acceptable to the citizens were those quality of life projects. And I don't know too many citizens in Ward 7 that will stand here and tell you that quality of life is a convention center. We need to have the discussion on the process here about option one and option two. Obviously, one of them needs to be voted on first or only, if it, assuming it passes. So I'm open to conversation about which of the options you'd like to vote on, one or two. Yeah, Your Honor, I would suggest that we vote on number one first because it's number one. Uh, <laughs> and besides, it, it answers all enough. the questions I think that Skip answer, asked us just now about the, the uh, quality of life projects. There again, I go back to the point that, in the view of the public, these projects don't really start until we begin moving dirt. Right. And I, th so I thought you made some great points, Pat, about, the, about what it'll feel like when the first shovel turns on the convention center, that virtually all of the so-called quality of life components will either be completed or also be under construction. I think, I think you made a good point. And the other comment, I just, this is sort of a, you know, a throwing comment, it's not worth much, but I'll offer it anyway. The wellness centers are, are a lot more complex, I think, than people realize. Because we've had discussions on this council a couple of times when one size does not fit all when it comes to wellness centers. And we need to design a wellness center that meets the needs of the citizens that it will serve. And one in, in southwest Oklahoma City may not be the same requirements as one in southeast Oklahoma City or northeast Oklahoma City, and certainly not northwest Oklahoma City. And so I think that, that we, we sort of uh, suggest that it's a simple project to do. They're not. They're very complex projects. They require <coughs> some study because a, a lot of the models I've looked at were city-operated facilities where the city actually ran it. And we, we have approached this from the very beginning that that would not be our model, that we would have partners involved in it. Right. So, anyway, I would right. suggest that we... Pat is suggesting option one. David has talked earlier about that he likes option two. I'm, in, I'm suggesting that he might prefer option two be voted on first. Any, any of you three have opinions about which one you'd like to vote on first? Does that matter me? I'm going to vote no on both of them. <laughs> Do whatever you want to. <laughs> All right. Well, I need a motion. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions on voting on option one? All right. Cast your votes. It passes 4-3.